So we should fund social services, give them more money, but we should also change the way that police funds are being used right now because social services would not have actually improved the situation when it came to George Floyd. Look at how many black guys are uh, unfairly shot and killed by police. Better funded social services doesn't necessarily deter that. You have to improve the police response as well. You have to focus on what's electable, even if it's not as popular with your, your privileged dipshit lefties that are probably too overweight to even go out of the house to vote. You have to actually focus on how to achieve legitimate change. And this is how. This is how. Taking my objectively correct approach, which is simply... Now, you guys know that as the perfect centrist in the entire universe, uh, I'm usually getting attacked by people on the right and people on the left. And recently, I got attacked by some people on the left. And I'll be honest, it really hurt my feelings. I cried myself to sleep multiple times because I was just so sad that people on the internet didn't like me. This is the tweet that started it all. And if you're expecting an apology from me, I hate to break it to you. I'm going to be doubling down, okay? 190 quote tweets. So you, you know this was a fucking banger. I said, defund the police along with ACAB have been horribly stupid arguments along as an optics nightmare for lefties. Police reform costs money. Defunding the police is counterintuitive. The system of police needs reformation, but that doesn't mean all cops are bastards. Stop. So ACAB right off the bat, we can get that out of the way. If you're saying ACAB, uh, you're an idiot. You're stupid. And you're probably attempting to just get like a bunch of likes on Twitter. And I don't think that you're interested in an actual uh, articulate, insightful conversation. Now, expanding on this, I understand when people say defund the police, what they're talking about is reallocate police funds to other services like social services or something. So a couple problems there is first off, then your, your slogan no longer means the, what it says, defund the police. It means defund the police. Why couldn't it be reallocate police funds, right? Like, couldn't you do something else? It's really quite annoying when you have the defund the police crowd and then you say, well, I don't think we should be like cutting funding for the police. And then they say, well, it really just means that we need to reallocate funds, you see. And according to this gigantic essay that I wrote in the comments section explaining what the slogan actually means, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so your slogan no longer means what your slogan says. If your slogan is get rid of gasoline and then people say, well, we kind of need gasoline for like, you know, the functioning of our society right now for, for cars to move and whatnot. Well, what I actually mean is that we need to change gasoline to be more environmentally friendly. So you, then your slogan doesn't, it doesn't mean what it said it was <laughs> like you, you're you're using a slogan that doesn't actually mean what you said it does. That's more of a semantics argument though. And I understand that. The, the deeper argument in regards to the defund the police thing is that we should reallocate police funds. Yes, but we don't reallocate police funds in the way of cutting police funding and then giving it to other social services. You reallocate police funds within the police. And this is where a lot of people get salty because they want the police to do better, but they forget the fact that police reformation costs money. It's expensive. You realize that retraining officers, getting rid of bad officers and rehiring better officers, changing the types of training they engage in, investing in more community-based policing. These are things that cost money. So does the police need a large chunk of cash going to military-grade weapons? No, 
Not at all. But your slogan isn't demilitarize the police. Your slogan is defund the police. We should stop funding police military grade weapons. Instead, take that money and put it towards something that is actually going to improve the police. Because when people say, well, you know, we should be giving it to, to social workers. Social workers should receive more funding. If, say, you don't need to reallocate all of the funds that you've cut from, say, military grade weapons, then maybe you can put it towards other community services. That's cool. But at the end of the day, when you're in trouble, you're not calling a social worker. And let's say you do. Let's say we have a social worker sent on site because this is something that I've advocated for before and I still am on board with that. I'm on board with sending a social worker to certain disputes if it's like a mental health problem. However, they need to have a police officer present. They need to. I'm sorry, but they, they literally need to because if you have a social worker who is called because my son is talking about suicide and he's really upset, I need some help, I'm really worried that he might hurt himself, and you send that social worker, well, what the fuck are you going to do if that kid, upon seeing the social worker, freaks the fuck out, takes a knife to his throat, and locks himself in his bedroom? Are you going to train the social worker to break down the door? What if somebody acts out dangerously suddenly? What if the way that they behave is unpredictable and they're, they're mental and they need legitimate help, but they start attacking the social worker? Do we train social workers then to be armed? Because now you've just created another police officer. So what you need to do is you bring a social worker along for certain uh, disputes accompanied by a police officer. It's that simple. The police officer is there to take on the liability, take on the risk of unpredictable behavior, but the social worker is there to actually try and de-escalate the situation. So the police officer plays the role of protection in case, and the social worker plays the role of de-escalation. I've said this before, but police are overworked. I'm on board with other social services playing a significant role and aiding in some of the disputes that right now go just to the police. I'm totally down with that. But again, changing this is going to cost money. Changing this kind of shit, retraining police is going to cost money. It is. And people want to act like, well, they already receive billions of dollars, blah, 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 blah. I I'm sorry. Yes, it's expensive. The police receive a lot of funds. Could those funds be used in a more efficient way? Yes, but they still need those funds. The problem is that cops don't know how to de-escalate. Another reason why we need reformation. We need to train police officers better to better be equipped for de-escalation. But guess what? Training costs money. So, I have this right here from the White House, something I'm, uh, I, I commend. March 28th, President Biden's budget invests in reducing gun crime to make our communities safer. And this kind of gives a breakdown as to why Biden is actually giving more money to the police. Because you'll see a lot of lefties ree about this, but they never read past the headline. And then when you do, you find out that actually Biden's giving more money to better train police officers to manage community policing better. So, let's see. The budget also provides critical support for federal law enforcement. That includes money for nearly 300 new deputy marshals and other personnel at the U.S. Marshal Service to help local law enforcement apprehend violent fugitives, plus funding that increases the number of assistant U.S. attorneys available to pros uh, prosecute cases by 10%. Gun crime is a multifaceted problem. It includes $30 billion in mandatory investments to support law enforcement and crime prevention. Let's see here. The funding to hire more than 300 agents, investigators, and personnel to build on the administration's robust effort to crack down on the pipeline of illegal firearms used in crimes. 
So that's another thing. I want to see less gun violence. Part of the way you do that is by reducing illegal gun ownership. I guess it wouldn't be gun ownership technically. Uh, reducing, you know, the illegal uh, uh, black market with firearms. You need law enforcement for that. And that costs money. I'm sorry. It does. So the president has a comprehensive strategy to reduce gun crime. The U.S. Department of Justice is pursuing rulemaking to rein in the proliferation of ghost guns, unserialized, privately made firearms. Okay. You also have the, the issue of human trafficking. Which again, the way that you respond to some of this is with police, but again, police being trained adequately, which is all something that costs money. The president is also strategically deploying historic funding to reduce gun crime. The Biden administration made certain American Rescue Plan funding, $350 billion, uh, available as unprecedented resources for states and cities to invest in hiring officers for accountable community policing, as well as crime prevention and intervention. So let's say you have a third party acting as uh, oversight for the police department to make sure that they are not abusing their power, to make sure that they are spending their money adequately. Well, who's going to pay that oversight board? I'm really sorry. That costs money. The budget calls for $20.6 billion in discretionary funding for federal law enforcement. All right. This funding will fund the police, including by putting more police officers on the beat and make essential investments in crime prevention and intervention. Okay. Putting more police officers on the beat so they can respond quicker. Crack down on rogue gun dealers and traffickers. Okay. Expanding the capacity of federal law enforcement to make our communities safer. Researching gun violence. Expanding community violence interventions. The budget includes $500 million for community violence interventions split between DOJ. Investing in gun crime prevention and community violence to make our neighborhoods safer. See, some of this is absolutely uh, proactive. It's not simply reactive. The president's budget includes $30 billion in mandatory resources to support law enforcement and crime prevention. Investing in employment programs for at-risk youth. $75 million for a new national youth employment program. Getting youth into employment sets them on a path towards long-term success. Research shows that, excuse me, research shows that summer youth employment programs can reduce youth gun uh, violent crime by 35% to 43% and lower mortality rates. Defund police is a bad idea, not a bad slogan. Cutting police funding doesn't fix what's broken. The basic critique is that American police departments dish out too much violence with little, uh, with too little accountability. They're not effective enough at solving serious crimes. Okay, I agree with this thus far. But cutting your city's police budget is not going to make the police more effective at catching murderers. And it's also not going to make officers more accountable for wrongdoing. To make officers more accountable for wrongdoing, you need to adopt some kind of measures that make them more accountable. Defund activists don't oppose increased accountability, of course. But both the eight can't wait agenda and the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act that the House passed focused on accountability. Defunders shifted the conversation off that towards defunding, but a non-accountable police department with 10% less money is still a non-accountable police department. Mark the intern put together this chart that compares how police officers per capita, um, wait, put together this chart that compares how police officers per capita a city has to, to how many people per capita are killed by the police department. You can see there's no relationship between the size of department and how much deadly violence it doles out. So this is an interesting uh, uh, chart right here. More cops, less violent crime. Let's see. The police in D.C. closed 66% of murders in 2018. If that number was just kept heading down from 66%, 
that would change for the worse. And it seems to me that there's pretty good reason to believe that if you cut funding for homicide investigations, you'd solve fewer murders. Somebody did a study of shooting investigations in Boston, and they found that homicides attract significant more investigative resources in terms of person hours spent on the case than non-fatal shootings. Okay. They also found that homicides are significantly more likely to be solved than non-fatal shootings. So if we are, oh, basically in direct proportion to the person hours spent on investigating them. So if we are frustrated by police department's limited success, one natural solution would be to give them more money to hire more detectives. Again, we're not saying take this money and just throw it at the police. Have fun. Okay. We're saying here is money that needs to be spent appropriately, adequately, and on this thing. Hiring grants distributed in 2019 were allocated according to an application score cutoff rule. So there is a way to give funds that are necessary for improving and reforming the police, which, mind you, is very broken right now. I'm not denying that. But you do so in an appropriate, adequate way. Just cutting funding is not the answer. Better policing will cost more money. Of course, we should fund social services, but this here makes a really strong point as well. George Floyd died specifically because of the police. Better social services would not have prevented that. Better funded social workers would not have prevented that. This is something that is directly a result of a broken police system. So we should fund social services, give them more money, but we should also change the way that police funds are being used right now because social services would not have actually improved the situation when it came to George Floyd. Look at how many black guys are uh, unfairly shot and killed by police. Better funded social services doesn't necessarily deter that. You have to improve the police response as well. So this is a really good article. Obviously, I'm not going to read over the whole thing, but it does give some interesting uh, stats to show that police that are, are more funded or less funded don't seem to have much correlation in regards to the amount of violence carried out by that police department. Now, of course, we don't know if every act of violence carried out by that department was justified or unjustified, but this is still a good place to start. You don't need police for nonviolent crime. How do you know that crime won't turn violent? You obviously have to have some kind of, of collateral involved, even if you are originally sending a social worker. This too is extremely important because if you want to make real change, you need to do so by voting. It depends who is in office, okay? As demonstrated by Joe Biden's move here to Fund the police, but make sure that that funding is going towards better causes and actually improving the police. And then finally, you can see here from Pew Research that a growing share of Americans now say they want more spending on police in their area. They might be wrong about this, sure. But let's think about this on a purely logistical uh, framework. In order to make changes, sweeping changes across the board, it's going to matter who is in office. It's going to matter who you vote for, both on a local level and on a federal level. So if your idea to defund the police herder is not popular with voters, you are doing a disservice to your end goal. I am in favor of changing the police. I want to make the police better. And that's why I constantly advocate to reform the fucking police. The difference between me and and people on Twitter who are seething over my correct take is that I care about actually seeing these outcomes. I care about actually seeing the police do better and fixing this system, which requires more money and money that is spent more appropriately. Whereas other people are dumb fuck chuckle fox who've never been loved by their fathers and instead, they're so caught up on getting Twitter likes about how based it is to say a cab and all cops are pigs and police suck. Oh, cops are bad. Blah, 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 blah. Instead of actually achieving their end goal, your defund the police bullshit, even if what you are actually advocating for is some is, is a good thing. The slogan pushes people away. 
It deters people. It hurts your chances to win elections, both on a local and federal uh, level. And that's the most effective and efficient way that you change the police. Even now, there are people on my tweet saying, we should just abolish the police. It's like, okay, I get it. All right, I get it. You're, you're a privileged person who uh, lives in a gated community and you're not around crime very often. You've clearly never had anything of value stolen from you. You've never been in a dangerous situation. Uh, good for you, honey. Glad to hear that you yourself are just bathing in privilege. But there are other people who don't want to see the police abolished. They want to see the police improved so that the police can still adequately respond to crime and still adequately protect people, but not carry this heavy weight of disproportionately harming black people. This is what sane people advocate for because us people who, you know, live in this little place I like to call reality, we recognize that the most effective way that you make change is through elections. And you're LARPing about abolish the police. All cops are bastards. A cab, defund the police. <laughs> you're just pushing people away. You're actually making it less likely that improvements will be made. You have to focus on what's electable, even if it's not as popular with your, your privileged dipshit lefties that are probably too overweight to even go out of the house to vote. You have to actually focus on how to achieve legitimate change. And this is how. This is how taking my objectively correct approach, which is simply reform the police that costs money. Stop spending your fucking budget on your big ass tank. Okay. Police and start actually making it so that uh, you're spending money on appropriate things so that you're actually responding appropriately so that you're actually trained to deescalate rather than escalate. These are things that can be done, but to do it, it costs money. The cops are basically useless unless you're rich or white. <laughs> oh my God, you people. You, have you ever been outside? You know, there's these green things that poke out of the dirt, right? It's called grass. You should go outside and touch it. A cab is also a really dumb LARPy thing to say. Another person on my tweet said, uh, what do they say? I thought they were being sarcastic, but they actually weren't. They were like, well, it, 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 then why do I feel unsafe around police? What? I had no idea that you feeling unsafe around police was good enough justification to say a cab or get rid of the police. You realize you could extend this logic to virtually anything, right? I'm, I feel really unsafe around firefighters. Therefore, firefighters are bad. Or even worse, I feel unsafe around black people. You having a discomfort, you having a little upset feeling in your little tummy doesn't mean shit. Make an argument or shut the fuck up. And I'm really sick of these Twitter lefty LARPers who whine, bitch, and moan about how based it is to say ACAB or defund the police while they're simultaneously harming the electability of these actual positions that would lead to legitimate change. And two, they're just giving more fodder to conservatives. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's counterproductive. And the people that are doing this, you're either a privileged loser or you are intentionally being a LARPing inflammatory little bitch because you don't care about achieving an actual change. Instead, you care about looking cool and virtue signaling for your other uh, fatherless lefty friends, okay? You might look real cool and get a lot of likes in the, in the GC, in the group chat, but you're doing a net harm. So fuck you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.